today, I sit here in the Rexall Center at the Rogers Cup where everything started and you're here with me today. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. That's really special. Um, how many women are, women are in the government here? What's the percentage? I meant to look that up before I got here. So, well, you know what it is? We do have a female uh, premier I know. in this province, which, which is unbelievable. a big deal. And gay. And gay. <laughs> and there are more women candidates. We took off two of them, two of the <laughs> marks there. No. Oh, we, we have a female prime minister also. For a very short stand, though. <laughs> we certainly have a yeah, well, albeit, it was still. Yes, we did. Nevertheless, yeah. yeah. More female figures. Majority female figures. We we want in BC as well. Yeah, there's there's more women than men. Okay. Well, actually, my my life is about um, equal opportunities for boys and girls. But women are so far behind. So it's taken up more of my time. But I grew up with a younger brother, uh, Randy Moffat. His last year that he played Major League Baseball was with the Blue Jays. And he was a relief pitcher. And most of his career he played with the San Francisco Giants. But he loved it here. First of all, <laughs> it was the first team he played on that could actually hit. And he could make a mistake and they could still win. Because um, the Giants used to win like one to nothing or two to one. And he said when he came up here, he could not believe it. The guys on the team would say, hey, don't worry, Moffat, we'll get you a couple of runs next inning. He's going like, oh, sure. Because he never experienced it. And sure enough, they would get a couple of hits and he'd go, ah, I can actually breathe to go back out on the, on the pitching mound to uh, try to win the game for the team. And he absolutely loved it. And he doesn't like the heat and we don't like the heat. So Canada's perfect for us. <laughs> I, mean, I used to come to Montreal and work in, in January. It never got uh, above minus six uh, Fahrenheit. And, uh, I was fine. Oh, I was fine. I loved it. Uh, brought my dog up here. Lucy loved the snow. So she was great. But it's such an honor uh, to be here, and I really look forward to our session with all the business uh, leaders, and particularly the women. And Ursula, what a great example she is of being such a leader um, in women's business, in business, uh, but as a woman leader. And these are the things that are very important because I, I'm a big believer, and you have to see it to be it. And I was thinking about your, your life and your journey and that a big part of it was here. And this was really a stepping stone to where you are now. No question. So um, I just, I don't know, it's wonderful to be here and, and I, think, I was just thinking about your life and how it, how it progressed to become our leader of the WTA and how important it is. And of course, um, Stacy's done such a great job. I mean, just getting Singapore for the next five years, and being in Turkey, and then before that was in uh, Qatar, and I, w I had I was able to go to Doha and experience it. I felt like I was in Palm Springs as far as the weather. <laughs> Otherwise, I knew I was in Palm Springs. <laughs> yes, like when the women <laughs> couldn't see them. Um, <laughs> but we have a long way to go. But I would I think that women's tennis is a, such a great leader, not only in women's sports, but for all women uh, globally. Because as I said, to see it is to be it. And we are out there and children, both boys and girls, are seeing it. And they think it's gonna be, they, they'll think it's normal. If you're a child and you see something, you'll think it's normal. And that's what you want um, for young people. You have to remember that 95% of the media has been controlled by men. And so we have learned to see the world through men's eyes, both men and women. So we do, I don't know, I know in the United States it's shocking how bad it is as far as uh, we're not even at 20% in Congress, which is pathetic. And I always think that the government should reflect what the population looks like. I just think that's kind of healthy. Uh, we certainly do not have that in the United States, so Canada's probably doing a lot better than we are uh, in many ways. And. I did my first, uh, I remember it was either sixth or seventh grade, I can't remember exactly what grade. I was trying to remember it. We had to be in court on another country. And I chose Canada. And I chose it for two reasons. I chose it because of the flag and the maple leaf. I love the shape of maple leaves. I don't know what it is, I just love it. <laughs> I always did as a child as I was growing up. 
and that you are very different from us, but you are our neighbors, our next door neighbors. And I wanted to know about Canadians. So that was my first report I did, and I love coloring the front page because I did the flag, you know, the maple leaf. I love the maple leaf with the red on it. I just loved it. So um, when I came here and saw the flag today, uh, it brought back memories uh, of that. And of course, Randy playing for the Blue Jays, and also um, just having friends, you know, relationships are everything, and just having friends like you or bird lights, uh, Vicki Berners from <laughs> Vancouver, she always used to say, and she still says, the most beautiful city in the world. And I thought, whoops, I'm in Toronto today. I've got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, she was number one in Canada at one time and uh, still a dear friend. And there's so many. And then I used to come here and work out in January, trying to rehab from all my knee operations. Joanne Taylor at Southwest, one at St. Clair, whatever. I don't know. And just all these wonderful memories. So uh, it's just great. Thank you both. Uh, we're going to open the floor for questions. Go for it, kids. <laughs>